Hello everyone and I have a pretty exciting chess game to show you. Maybe you see this chess game before and because in these days people are talking about this chess game. This is the chess game between Judith Polgar and Magnus Carlsen. It happened after many years later as Judith Polgar retired in 2014. During the rest day uh, in the candidates chess tournament Magnus Carlsen uh, on, he was on the park in Madrid, Madrid, Spain. He took all the challengers and guess what? One of the challengers was Judith Polgar herself. She appeared on the scene and she challenged Magnus Carlsen for a blitz chess game. So Magnus Carlsen was playing blitz chess games in that park and playing against amateur chess players. But suddenly he played with Judith Polgar. So let's see what happened in this chess game. Before showing the game, this is the actual picture about this chess game. A very nice picture. So, uh, okay. So this chess game happened only a few days ago, in July second, twenty twenty two, in Madrid, Spain. So, without further delay. Let's see what happens. So Judith Polgar, who has the white pieces, starts the game with e4, c5, the Sicilian defense, knight to f3, e6, d4, c takes on d4, knight takes on d4. So basically they were blitzing up the moves. So it was a 3 minutes chess game, so they were playing pretty fast. And Judith Polgar castled from the queen side and Carlsen is immediately charging on the queen side g4 and Polgar is charging on the king side exchanging the knights bishop to d4 developing the final piece and black is ready to castle maybe there is only one move left for castling but Magnus uh, Magnus Carlsen is under attack so Judith Polgar pushed the pawn but now isn't this just simply blundering a pawn knight takes on g4 and Polgar, of course, didn't capture the knight and she played rook to g1. Of course, in this position, capturing the knight is not a good idea because of bishop takes on h1 and that's losing a rook, losing the exchange. So, in this position, not capturing the knight, but rook to g1 and also eyeing on g7. And Polgar herself, in one of the videos in YouTube, she admitted that uh, she actually didn't see knight takes on g4, so this was all coincidence. Defending the knight and not capturing the g pawn but developing bishop to d3 and this was a very good move. So we have bishop to f8 not allowing uh, rook takes on g7. And in this position I see the original video Magnus Carlsen didn't like his position. So if castling actually this is losing on the spot. Not because queen takes knight, as the g-pawn is going to be pinned, but because of who rook takes on g7. This is check. Crushing in, smashing in with the rook. And basically black is getting force checkmated. King takes on g7, checking the king, king back, and then capturing the knight. And basically black is going to get checkmated, threatening checkmate on h7, and also on g7, and there is no sensible defense. Black is getting checkmated. So... Basically, there is force checkmate in this position if black castles. Bishop goes back and defending on g7. Bishop to e4. And in this position, basically capturing the bishop was the better move or even pushing the b-pawn according to the computer chess engine. But in this position, something amazing happened. Magnus Carlsen made a blunder. Well, of course, this was only a friendly game, an exhibition game. It was not very serious. But still, it is interesting that the world chess champion made a horrible blunder. He played rook to c8. And this was a blunder of epic proportions. Well, in this position, again, bishop takes on e4 would be pretty nice. And then capturing the bishop with the pawn and actually engine says... White is slightly better. So in this position we have rook to c8 and this move was a blunder. And can you see why this move was a blunder? Maybe you see this chess game before. So can you guess the next move of white? If you haven't seen this chess game before. 
Actually, Judith Polgar played a move, and after that move, Black can easily resign. It is basically all over after that move. Okay, so Judith Polgar played bishop to b6. And people who was watching this chess game, the spectators, applauded Judith Polgar because of her move. What a move. An amazing deflection tactic by Judith Polgar. And we have bishop takes on e4 and then Polgar simply captured the queen. But let's take it back. If capturing the bishop, if saving the queen, then you are not going to be able to save the king. Queen takes on d7. Check. Mate. Black is getting checkmated. So this is why this is all over. So you can't defend the queen. Otherwise you are getting checkmated. Bishop takes on e4. And simply capturing the queen. Bishop back. Bishop back. And Carlsen finally placed his knight on f5. And at this moment of the game he said something like. Okay my knight is finally okay. <laughs> or something like that. But Polgar played knight to e4. And then Magnus Carlsen resigned. What a game. Very interesting isn't it? She still got it. So in this position actually... Uh, as I said, I watched the original clip and I see how Judith Polgar played bishop to b6. She actually played this move instantly, very quickly. She immediately played bishop to b6. She saw what happens in this position. So there is, uh, this is basically losing by force. There is no defense. And bishop back, knight e4, and Magnus Carlsen resigned. There is no point playing this chess game, so Carlsen didn't want to fight a losing battle. So thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you next time with more interactive chess games. So take care and bye bye.